Okay. Okay, uh, now it's time. I've got the pleasure to present Jose Abel Palafox Gonzalez, who is going to talk to us on uh, Bayesian B, B spline surrogate model on 2D gravity data inversion. This okay, um, thank you. So, uh, thanks for the opportunity of being here. So, this talk is a joint collaboration with Dr. Emilia Fergoso and uh, with, her, with Dr. Maria Luisa Daza from UC Davis. So um, I'm going to present uh, a numerical procedure for addressing gravity data inversion problems. So, uh, oops. Okay. So let's consider this phenomenon. So we have uh, an object that is called a source body. And this source body is uh, in the subsoil. And uh, let's, let's assume that this uh, terrain or this domain is composed by the homogeneous medium. So because of the density or, or the mass of the source body, the local gravitational field is affected and produce the, uh, a field that is called anomaly, a gravity anomaly. <clears throat> so when we are on the surface of this, of this terrain, we observe this, anom this anomaly and, uh, and that's the, that's the, the, the phenomenon. So, Okay, this phenomenon is, is governed by the Newton's second law. So we have this equation here. So the, the, the gravity gravitational force that is felt by, by a point P sub zero on the surface is given by uh, the contribution of uh, a point P tilde with this density and this mass. Here, uh, gamma is a gravi gravitational universal Newton's constant, and uh, R is the Euclidean distance between P and P tilde. So um, when we consider the, the entire volume contribution to the gravitational field, we have this equation here. And the, yes, that, that is an, uh, an, integral, an, an integral equation over the 3D, 3D domain. So we observe that here appears the contribution of every single uh, differential element. And uh, yeah, you have this, 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 uh, this field G. So in practice, what is measured by, by devices is only the uh, vertical component. So this this is uh, this give, give us a result uh, uh, field. So in particular, we have only the vertical component yeah, that we call G sub zeta. Okay. So the inverse problem that we are interested in is that from measurements of this vertical component, we want to recover the object, the source object that is on the in the subsoil. Yeah, and that is a very challenging inverse problem. It has no unique solution. And we will talk now about that. Uh, but uh, we are making here a little parenthesis. So in this case, we are addressing the 2D case. So that means that in this, this graph, instead of studying uh, the entire volume, we take only a 2D slice. So, but uh, the, the results are, or the, the model formulation can be extended to the 3D case with uh, increasing the computational cost. So uh, one of the points or, or the interesting points here uh, is in regard to the uh, computational cost of the, of the method. So uh, we are just uh, addressing the 2D case for this, this preliminary study. Okay, but uh, traditionally, or by discretizing the integral equation, 
it can be construct a linear system in this form where A is known as sensitivity matrix. And in this case, uh, this vector G corresponds to the uh, measurements of the uh, vertical component of the, uh, of the gravitational field or the anomaly. So the interest quantity here is the, this vector row. Uh, this vector uh, is related with the level of the discretization of the study domain. So uh, in the 3D case, uh, we consider a mesh and uh, for every single prism of this mesh, we have an entry of this vector. So the length of the, of the vector row is uh, the number of uh, prism, prisms of in, the, in, the, in the mesh discretization. So this linear system is not a square. So, uh, and in, uh, also the metrics and sensitivity metrics is a full matrix. That, the, that means that has few entries that are e equals to zero. And uh, since this, this uh, linear system is not squared, so uh, there is not unique solution to this problem. So traditional approaches or classical approaches for this problem uh, in regards uh, uh, address the problem as, as a optimization uh, list, list square least square uh, optimization problem like this. And uh, also they incorporate incorporate a regularization term. So this regularization term is, is very important because it, it breaks the, the problem of non-uniqueness in the, in the solutions, but uh, also the, depending on the regularization term uh, is the, the type of, of solutions that we will have to this inverse problem. So uh, for instance, regularization terms like Tihonov or Laplace and like uh, regularization terms promotes a smoothness on the solutions. So, uh, and that is a, a very important point because since in the, uh, if, you, if you remember in the problem, we have a different medium of, if we plot or we consider the entire map for the density of the study domain, we have a discontinuity because the density of the source object is different from the density of the medium. And so uh, in the places where we change from one prism on the, on the object to one prism in the, in the study, in the, in the domain, uh, we have a, a very uh, large change in the density. So there is a, a, a non-continuous change from uh, uh, the density from the object to the to the to the medium. So uh, when you we use regularization terms that uh, promote smoothness, so the problem is that we cannot recover that discontinuity. And uh, and also uh, the the number of of mesh prisms uh, is a free parameter. That means that there is not a direct relation between the amount of observation points and how much or, or how fine the mesh should be. So, and uh, and then there, is a, there, is a, there is a problem because we have not this uh, scheme where uh, increasing the number of, of the, of the discretization, discretization of the mesh, we will have more uh, results, more better results or, or, more, uh, or more quality on the reconstructions. And, uh, and also uh, this, this problem, as, as I said, the, the matrix is, is full. So uh, the, uh, for, for instance, to address, to use a numerical procedure, we have to solve the, 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 uh, uh, the linear systems a lot of times uh, and then that become that could become a very very large computational problem, and for instance, for for making studies for uncertainty quantification, that is uh, related to MCMC methods. This uh, this will be a, a, a also a computational problem. <laughs> so these are uh, these points, the these bullets, 
are the, the key point of our research. So for AIM, these problems, we propose uh, what we call a low level representation. So as uh, first steps, we observe that the boundary of the object can be uh, described by um, a periodic displaying curve like this. So uh, in this, uh, this representation or, or this parametric representation, we have some parameters that are, are C sub i that are known as control points. And we have here the BS-plane basis function. And also this BS-plane basis, basis function have a, a key degree. And uh, well, the idea is just to uh, focus in recovering the boundary of the object, the, of the object, instead of recovering the entire density map, and that's one of the of the points. So uh, with this formulation, we change the problem that that is a three or two dimensional problem, because we will have to 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 recover the density for for every single prism on the mesh. So in this case, we are a tradition, or we are changing this this problem to a find control points. Okay, uh, and also yes, uh, this is also important. The number of control points is related, and, and also the degree of the of the BS plane is uh, related to the complexity of the boundary. That means that for a, a more more complex or more more uh, with more changes boundaries. Uh, we will need to uh, uh, have more control points, but uh, in any case, we have we start to having the relation between the number of parameters or the number of nouns of the in the problem with the complexity of the object that we want to recover. Okay, so the uh, our inverse problem, our formulation for the for the for our inverse problem problem becomes something like this where uh, as you see we have uh, this problem over control points and density yeah so in few words what we are proposing is uh, to to, uh, to put a a, a cure a, a, a a bs plane cure and every single prism that is uh, into into this 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 cure it will be considered as a part of the object. And also uh, this will have a, a value of density rho. So uh, uh, the, the, the density of the interior of this, of this plane curve will be constant and it will be equals to rho. So, yes, so this map only, uh, what, what does this map is to take a, a set of control points and uh, construct the, the, the equivalent the, the equivalent map map in the in the, the discretization. Yeah. So uh, once we have this representation with, with few with few control points, the the next part or the next step is to design a numerical a numerical procedure for for moving or for using these control points. Uh, in order to push them towards the solution or one of the solutions of, the, of this inverse problem. So, uh, but uh, also here we can see that uh, in, with this formulation, we have a set of, of uh, mesh prisms that are uh, enclosed in this, this uh, shape S and, and, and we have a difference with this uh, between this and the and the, the medium, so in this case we are uh, constructing a non-continuous map of density in in the in the domain. So that's one of the the key points. And um, okay, so let's move towards the numerical procedure. Okay, first uh, before that, we consider that every single control point is a random variable. And also, rho is a random variable. So, uh, in a Bayesian formulation, we are interested in this distribution, conditional distribution. It's the distribution of the control points and the density given 
the, uh, the anomaly, the gravity anomaly, or given the data. So from Bayes rule, we have this relation that the posterior density or this, the posterior pro, uh, probability is proportional to the likelihood times pri a prior distribution. Yep. So uh, for the likelihood, we have uh, we consider that uh, the that data are uh, contaminated with additive Gaussian noise with this mean zero and this variance sigma square. So uh, the distribution of the the likelihood is given by 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 a normal distribution. And for the prior term, we con we will consider that that is also related. With this this is the prior is related with the information that we know uh, about control points. So we consider in this part just a uniform distribution. Yep. And uh, the, the only uh, restriction that we are placing to the control points uh, is that the, uh, the resulting B-spline shapes uh, are uh, in, the, in, the, in the support of the of the of the domain and also that that have not uh, problems like uh, self intersecting curves um, things like that and the basically is just the the only consideration so that is considered here as an indicator function so every every shape that have self intersections will be considered as out of support and not will be useful so, uh, okay, yes, this is our, our formulation. And for exploring this posterior distribution, we designed a Markov chain Monte Carlo method that in particular will be a random walk. And uh, yeah, in every step of the MCMC methods, we propose or we generate randomly a set of values for, for the control points and for the, the, the density. And these, uh, the resulting density uh, constructed by this curve S will be uh, accepted or rejected in a metropolis testing criterion. Okay, I'm going to, to describe the, the design of the MTMC. So there are just uh, five movements or five possible movement. So uh, one move will be uh, taking, uh, okay, let me first explain this. The control points here are the green dots. Yes, as you see, these green dots define or describe a polygon that is known as control polygon yep. over here. And uh, the ones that we have this control polygon, the corresponding BS plane is constructed and this will be, in this case, will be the blue blue line, yeah, the blue blue group. So every uh, given a discretization of the of the study domain, uh, every prism that is into uh, this curve blue, this blue group, group uh, will be considered as an inner point or inner prism and also the intersecting uh, prisms. So uh, the, every, every uh, square that is in, in white means that will be, that will have uh, the density, the same density value. So in this case, or every step of, of this MCMC, we are constructing this kind of curves in, in blue and the every, uh, and this will give us uh, a proposal of density map that will be evaluated in the gravitational field equation. So uh, for constructing or for moving these control points, we use this, this MCMC. So uh, in the first movement, we choose, uh, we take the, uh, uh, every, every point and we move the entire, entire figure, the, yes, keeping the same, the same uh, position just translate the, the, the control polygon uh, to, to other direction that is that will be uh, just chosen uh, randomly. Uh, another movement is related with uh, changing the size of the of this of this polygon. 
So uh, once that we move the every single point of the control polygon or moving the entire uh, uh, control polygon will give us a, uh, a different, a different uh, shape that will be uh, related with the movement that we have applying to the control polygon. So resizing uh, means to uh, choose first this, the mass center of the control polygon and push every control point uh, that would be uh, closer to the mass center or out or getting far from the, the, the mass center. So that is just a change of scale that makes the, the, the figure uh, smaller or larger. So uh, next, uh, next move will be choosing randomly a single point in the, in the control polygon. And for instance, we take this, this point here that is indicated with a square, black square. And once that we move this point randomly, we'll produce different shapes, shapes uh, that are drawn in cyan color. So uh, one of the one point here is uh, in regard to uh, numerical stability of the, the method. If we just move one single control point, uh, the resulting B spline will be affected only uh, in a, a small night, uh, neighborhood of the control point that we are moving. Yeah. As we see here. So um, an, another movement will be just rotating the, the, the entire polygon, keeping the same, the same lengths. And the final move will be changing the density. So for the density, we just uh, perform a random walk. We uh, changing the previous density with uh, uh, an alpha value that is chosen between, we ask with a uniform random distribution. Yeah, okay. So um, with this procedure, we have this kind of results. In this test case, synthetic test, test case, the true will be the blue square in the middle of the domain. And uh, we are drawn here, just the last simulations of the MCMC methods. So the green lines corresponds to uh, those simulations, the, the BS planes constructed with those simulations. And uh, that gives us a, a notion of, pro, of the dispersion in the, or the variance in the probability in the posterior, posterior distribution that we uh, choose or we uh, describe as a probability region. And uh, also we are plotting here the corresponding density for each one of those simulations. So that gives us also a notion of how is the distribution related to the density map. So uh, in, in addition, we can construct, uh, if we just need a single uh, result or a single answer, we can construct it by taking the posterior mean, that is the resulting curve constructed with the, the last MCMC simulation. And in this case, the posterior mean will be the, this red, the uh, dashed red curve here. And uh, the prisms, mesh prisms that are enclosed by this posterior mean curve uh, have the same density, yes? So we, we can have as a result a single shape or single object that uh, seems or, or, or is uh, close to the true in, in this case. And if for this case, the, the resulting density of the, of the, the posterior mean is uh, of 0 0.64. The true density is, the, is one. So uh, in, in this case, the, the, the is not so, uh, so close or relatively so close to, to, the, to the true value, but in comparison with uh, methods that use the HONOP type uh, regularizations, this value is more, more approximated to the true than the, the other ones, okay? So, uh, well, in this case, we have only using eight control points and uh, with a more challenging test case, 
we have this figure that is known as a dike. And in this case, the, the figure is more complex. So uh, using eight number points or eight control points is not enough. So uh, we use 12 points in this case. And, and also more MCMC iteration will be uh, needed. So, but uh, the results are very, very interesting. So we see that uh, the, the estimation provides a good, a good estimation of the shape of the true, true object. Uh, and also have a more uh, uncertainty in the, in the bottom of the estimation that it's also natural in, in this kind of applications. And uh, the posterior main mean is more uh, accurate to the to the true to the true, uh, and uh, we see also that in the in the top of the of the object we have a very good reconstruction. So uh, and this is this is the, the kind of results that we we are having with this procedure. But as a conclusions, we have a, a low level representation for the source object. We are looking for the boundary of the object instead of trying to recover the entire map. So uh, this gives us the, the possibility to have a discontinuous solution for the, for the inverse problem or to, to build this continuous solution for the inverse, for the inverse problem. And also uh, the number of parameters that we are using in these cases uh, in a specific, the number of points in the control polygon and uh, the, the number of prints in the discretization are related with the uh, quality of the results that we want to recover. So we use this, uh, this procedure as, um, as a tool for, a, for uh, making a representation that could be re uh, relate every all these, these, these quantities. So, and that, that is also a, a good point. And uh, well, finally, with this reduction on the dimension of the, of the inverse problem, we also have the possibility to perform Bayesian analysis for quantify the uncertainty. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I'm ready for questions. Thank you. We've got uh, a couple of minutes for uh, possibly a couple of brief questions. We've got four minutes altogether until the next speaker. Uh, anybody who wants to put uh, a question, please uh, put a uh, mention in the chat. Uh, any questions so far? I have a question. Hmm? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, are there, uh... Have you tried any other priors or do you suspect that the prior may have a particular shape or form? Oh, yes, yes, that is a very good question. Um, in, in this case, we can have, or we can apply priors that are related directly to the shape of the object. For, for instance, if we have that the, the, the object that we want to recover is a, a, a circle, or uh, an, an sphere, uh, we can have, uh, we can put uh, that restriction or that that information directly over the the the, the, the over the the V spline. Yeah. So in traditional approaches, the that information could be more uh, complicated to to incorporate to the problem. Yeah, because for for instance, the, the smoothness on the on the on the density map. Will we uh, will will uh, will not be related to the smooth smoothness in the shape of the object? So uh, and yes, uh, uh, of course the 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 restriction or the information the prior information is very very important and will provide different results. But in this case that we have as a, an advantage is that this information will be incorporated directly over the, 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 the shape of the VS plane instead of in a more dark uh, fashion. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, any more questions? Something in the chat? Yeah. Uh, question from uh, Fabricio Ortoniel. 
Perez Perez, do you want to ask it directly or should I read it out? Uh... Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the price for, for reducing the, the dimension is that uh, we have uh, incorporated more information over the, the, the display. Yeah, and yes, uh, it, it's, a, it's a problem because we, we have, we can, we should add, uh, incorporate more information more restrictions but uh as i said to to, to miguel the advantage is the advantage is that we we will incorporate that information directly over the, the spline instead of, of something amount okay thank you very much uh now we have to move over to the next speaker yeah thank uh, you if uh, beatriz valles moreno is going to get uh, ready and to share your screen, but that's now it's as well time to start once you're ready. 